Yo, what's more, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be a video uh, that I'm doing suggested by YouTube uh, user Super Gluey. What he wants to know is what's my take on aliens, what I think about uh, aliens, um, you know, visiting the Earth from other planets, this kind of stuff, UFOs, all this kind of topic. And uh, I, what I gathered from his question was do I believe, do I not believe this kind of stuff? Um, I, when I was younger and stuff, I watched, I was really into that kind of stuff. I watched a lot of, uh, you know, uh, movies. Um, there was one movie actually, well two actually, my mom she used to really like sci-fi and stuff and uh, I was just a kid, like maybe like 10 years old or something like that. And um, one time I was upstairs, was kind of bored and stuff. You know, a kid, you got to have the attention all the time from things or people or doing something. Uh, we only had like one television or like two televisions, but one didn't really work too well. And my anyway, my mom was downstairs on the good television. She was watching, I think it was uh, either Fire in the Skies or Communion, uh, one of the two. And... Um, by today's standards, I wouldn't say they're very scary movies, but for a kid at that time to be seeing that stuff, like, you know, it, it traumatized the shit out of me, like, really bad. So I was just like, you know, for the next couple of years, I had trouble going to sleep. I was just, you know, terrified of uh, that idea of aliens, you know, uh, little gray men, so to speak, this type of thing. And um, so that's kind of, you know, what I was, you know, kind of afraid of, you know, in psychology. Uh, the archetype they use is a shadow, um, at least Jungian uh, psychology would. Uh, and what a shadow basically is, is anytime you know you, you experience fear, this kind of stuff, uh, it takes a form. So if you have a dream and this kind of stuff, the shadow may take the form of whatever you're scared of. If it's heights, then it could be heights. If it's uh, ghosts, it could be ghosts. You know, kids are scared of a lot of things. You know, closet, this kind of stuff, uh, boogeyman in the closet, this kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, with me, that was kind of the thing. And then, you know, I always enjoy sci-fi. I always enjoy uh, alien movies, this kind of stuff, superhero movies, all that kind of all that kind of stuff, but when it comes down to the question of at my current age of whether or not I believe that they exist or they don't, um, I have to say that I do not believe that they did. For a long time, I did, and I, you know, was reading into it a lot, that kind of stuff on the internet, you know, because there's tons of information on the internet. Like you can go out there and you can read in, and I think that there are, you know, some people that make very compelling cases uh, when you hear about uh, alien abduction cases and this kind of stuff. Um, you know, you read it and you're just like, wow, that's crazy, this kind of stuff. This person was hip hypnotized and this is what they said and you can't lie if you're hypnotized. All this, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, as, as I got older and that kind of stuff, I started to, started to think about some more, started to, you know, investigate the topic more. And um, pretty much by today I've come to uh, the conclusion that really... I don't see enough evidence to believe something like that at this time, um, to believe that there are. The thing about it is that uh, you have to think of it from, think of it from our perspective, okay? In a few thousand years even, or even in, you know, let's say 10, 10 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000 years, let's say, with our technology, it would still be insanely difficult to traverse the universe. It's going to be very, very hard to come up with the technology to do it. I mean, you know, really, in terms of resources and fuel, you can't do it uh, with anything that's propelled by a, a, a resource that's going to run out, okay? It has to be, you know, gravity-defying stuff. you got to have anti-gravity or, or something like that, or maybe solar, maybe solar power. But other than that, I mean, how are you going to gather enough energy, okay, uh, of, of a resource or something like, you know, with... We use fossil fuels for everything we use, but how could you gather enough energy to move an object like that all across space? Uh, Anti-gravity is the popular theory that you know you could create uh, a, you know a gravitational field in front of you and just fall into it and fall forever, and that's that's kind of the idea is that you would create uh, you know a, a, a gravitational field in front of you so it's like you're falling forever in any direction and that's one you know explanation of UFOs is that's why they stagger all over the place and they do crazy things because the anti-gravity field that they're that they're creating in front of them causes them to fall all the time and if they move it and stuff you know they kind of like you know they, they kind of act sporadic they don't exactly move uh, you know clean linearly they're kind of all over the place they're jittery they're you know that kind of stuff and that that explanation I think is probably the way to go but I mean is it even possible like it's you know these type of questions I mean it would be very very difficult to come up with the technology to do that kind of stuff I mean, I would just be dumbfounded if I was to see something like that. Um, you know, there are 
conspiracy theories and this kind of stuff that we already have technology like that. Um, and I think that that's kind of those are kind of interesting ideas, but I don't know. You know, it, it, to me it seems it seems a little far fetched because I don't understand how you could really do it. Like you know, now granted, I'm not a physics, I'm not a big physics person. Okay, you know, I'm I'm a computer scientist. I know everything you want to know about computers, but when it comes to physics, you know, I'm good with math, but I'm not really you know to that level. I don't understand how you could create uh, you know an object with enough mass to pull you into it. And it's just, it's a weird uh, concept in the anti-gravity to, to move something through space like that. Um, and even still, you got to power the generators somehow to create the field to go into it. So in order for an alien from another planet or aliens to come here, it would just be, you know, extremely, extremely difficult. I mean, you know, and teleportation, is that possible, you know, without having something set up on the other end? you know, and, and sort of beam yourself there. I mean, these these are all very, I mean, I think right now it's kind of too early for for us to speculate on whether or not it's even possible. I'm sure eventually we'll figure out if this stuff is, is actually, you know, physically possible to do. Because, you know, we all see it in movies and that kind of stuff, but there is a possibility that some of this stuff just can't be done. You know what I'm saying? It just can't be done. Like, it's not possible. It's not physically possible to do it. And yeah, and I'm sure, you know, people are going to rebuke that and they're going to say, you know, well, we just haven't had the technology to do it yet. Eventually we'll figure it out and this kind of stuff. And maybe you're right. I'm not saying you're not, but it just, to me, it seems like, uh, you know, it'd be so difficult to do. It'd be so hard to do that, you know, if it's that hard for us to do, I have trouble seeing, you know, another race from another planet being able to do it either because there's a lot of problems involved with, um, you know, when a race evolves to be the dominant species on a planet to the point where they can start to even think about other planets or even become, uh, you know, intellectual, that's a question too. Evolution, uh, in, in regards to evolution, okay, um, it's not necessarily the most intelligent uh, animal or creature that's going to dominate the planet. That, that might not always be the case, okay? You know, for example, with us, if we went one-on-one -on -one with a T-Rex, who's going to win? We're smarter, we can run away, but what if we can't run away? What if it's super fast? You could see other planets having creatures dominate them that are dumb as bricks, that are like as smart as a rat or a cat or a T-Rex, okay, with a brain like, you know, like, like this big, okay? And just because if it evolved in such a way that it becomes, you know, uh, just that kind of predator, it could, you know, annihilate all the other species. We evolved this way um, and, you know, we're, we are v extremely intelligent compared to other animals, and we use that to our advantage. But that doesn't mean that on another planet, the dominant species is going to be intelligent. The dominant species on another planet could be, like I said, dumb as bricks. It could be like a rat, a giant freaking rat, okay, that just breeds like crazy and just devours everything, you know, just, just kills every other creature, you know, because that could happen. I mean, imagine if, if like a T-Rex dinosaur, let's say when they had babies or something, uh, had like 50 of them and they didn't need to eat that much and they were huge and they were super fast and would we have had any chance? I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to say, you know, so it, what my point is is that it's not always going to be the most intelligent animal, the most intelligent creature in every scenario on every planet uh, that supports life that could become the dominant race to even think about looking outward. And just because a creature is is dominant, I don't think that connects to intelligence. Okay, intelligence for us helped us become the most dominant, uh, you know, top of the food chain race on the planet. But in other planets, that might not necessarily be the case. So you know, there's just there's there's a lot of things you have to think about. Now there's a lot of planets out there. So there's you know tons of different. You could say you know not infinite, but you know tons of different types of planets with different. Um, makeup and you know if there is you know most of them don't support life let's say like you know 99.9% .9 don't support life the other ones that do could be further back in uh, in their development than us the ones out of those that you know maybe the few that out of those that are you know where we are a little bit past us could be so far away that you can never imagine them being able to sense our presence um, so I just find it very hard to believe that that could happen you know and they could just come here and, and visit us and that kind of stuff 
uh, and us not have any kind of um, evidence of it. You know, I think that if they did, would they keep it under wraps if they did find like a crash sauce or let's say or something? They they might they might and there's uh, like there's a lot of evidence or people call it evidence to say that that the government has been doing that kind of stuff they've been hiding and I mean I can see that I can understand that they might be able to do that I just think of it as like you have to think of you know the difficulty of the task the difficulty of the task to find another planet with creatures on it to want to go there and actually go there to observe I mean you know these are not simple things to do. I mean, the, the complexity that you would have to consider, the things you would have to think about to, to travel there, to, you know, it's just, it's mind-blowing. Like, you, for us at this point, we're nowhere near, uh, you know, where we'll need to be at to be able to do things like that, at least in my opinion. Some people can conspiracy theorize all they want. Um, now, you know, there are certain um, things that are considered conspiracy theories that I do buy into. I do, I do think that uh, they're probably correct with the U.S. government, things like that, and what they do. I do agree with all that kind of stuff. But in terms of extraterrestrials and visiting us and monitoring us and this kind of stuff, I just think it's such a difficult task to, to accomplish. I mean, you know, who knows if we'll ever be able to do it uh, if we don't destroy ourselves before them, which we probably will. You know, it's just to me, it seems like it, it'd be so difficult to do that I have a hard time believing that others uh, have done it and that we wouldn't find out about it. Not just that, that they did it, but that there would be no leak for us to, you know, uh, like the, the average citizen, like the public, to, to figure out that, that this was to happen. Because, I mean, it wouldn't take that much evidence. I mean, most of the stuff you see online, if you go look, it's all basically like, you know, it's all fake. You know, majority of it's, you know, there's only like a few, like maybe 5% that even look remotely close to being real, like even remotely close. So, you know, that being the case, the fact that it's so, you know, the technology would require the engineering to to travel across the universe to find other species. Uh, and not only that, also too with the, um, what is it called? Uh, is it SETI? I think it's SETI. Um, they also have not found anything, and they're they're in danger. I think of possibly shutting down. So that's you know, so that's another thing too that they've been broadcasting radio signals into space all the time, and have not received any kind of response, and have not seen anything, not heard anything. You know, it's just um, I don't know. I think that the whole thing now, you know, it, it's just I don't I don't see it as being realistic personally. I don't I I don't think that uh, that uh, extraterrestrials. Uh, are visiting the planet without our without our knowing, uh, and I don't think they probably ever have. Um, people have, you know, there because you got to look at the human psyche too. You got to think of us as as human beings. People love to get attention, okay, and um, sometimes you can make a living from getting attention, and some of these people do. You can make a lot of money if you you know fabricate one of these types of things. And the other thing too is that people seem to think that the human brain, the mind is perfect. Like we never make mistakes. Like we never get deja vus, which is an error of the brain. Like we never get, you know, uh, sleep paralysis, which happens to everybody, by the way. And we never, uh, you know, people don't take acid, people don't get weird trips, all this kind of stuff. Like these things happen. These things happen to the human mind. These things happen to the brain on occasion. Okay, we're not perfect, you know. Sometimes, just like computers, we'll blue screen. Sometimes we'll do things, you know. We'll we'll see things. We'll, you know, we're not perfect, okay. And that's the thing. I think a lot of people think like, no, you know, we're not like that. We do make mistakes. Our minds, you know, do make make mistakes, make errors. So, you know, and you know, adding to that, the fact that um, that you know, you you could have some, you know, people that you know have the type of brain where they could be sick or mentally ill. They could have a lot of this kind of stuff. You know, people like, uh, you know, having delusions, uh, schizophrenic, uh, delusions of grandeur, importance, things like this. All of this mixes in with it. And unfortunately, if there's no absolute concrete evidence, like, for example, if the U.S. government even was to come out and say that, yes, there are aliens they've been visiting us for all this time, yada, yada, yada. I still probably wouldn't believe it until you show me some good evidence. Show me some footage that doesn't look like it's CG. Show me some stuff uh, that really, or show me the technology. Okay, until I see one fly overhead, close by, you know, like like close, so that I can tell that, you know, this is legit. Until then, um, 
I probably won't won't believe it. You could call me a skeptic, um, but I think that you know it's probably good for me to put out videos like this because you seem to look up online, you look through it, and all you find are conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. No one ever does a video just saying, "No, I don't, I don't believe it." You know, I, I don't. So that's kind of what this is. Uh, let's see, 15 minutes to explain why I don't necessarily believe or I don't think there's enough evidence to believe because that is an extraordinary claim extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence and I don't see the evidence there to prove that um, you know that task would be crazy you know I mean if you want to talk about did, did, the, did the US uh, go to the moon or not I think that's an interesting topic because that's something that you know there's a lot of info on and uh, they you know, the government said they did but did they really you can analyze the the footage and draw conclusions from that that's a more interesting topic this to me is not as interesting because it's like you know even though I've talked about it for you know 15 I'll be 16 minutes by the time I'm done I just I just don't see the proof I don't see the evidence and it's just it would be so hard to do to travel the, across the universe like that. Just to visit somebody, I mean, you know, risk your life, you know, or, or your technology. I don't know, man. Later, guys. Peace.